Good morning. Going to be answering, uh, Lord willing, <laughs> going to be answering a few questions today and also making maybe perhaps, Lord willing, a third video. That one is still up in the air for at least today, but these videos are definitely going to be done, Lord willing, today. I'm going to be answering two questions. <clears throat> And um, these were supposed to be done yesterday, but um, that didn't happen. So, get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Turn in your King James scriptures to Revelation chapter 22. <clears throat> Coffee was asked what 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 about rewards what about our rewards because it says in the scripture and we're going to look at this about how we cast our crowns at the lord at the feet of the lord jesus christ god our father but what what what, what are the rewards what are the rewards we're going to look at this um a little bit in depth here today um I did kind of touch on this before, but like I said, I'm gonna get a little. We're gonna get a little bit more in depth with it today. Okay, so turn in your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, to Revelation chapter 22. We're gonna read one verse to start. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, and this is the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, speaking. Um, majority of you might have these in red words. I have a Cambridge. They ain't in red. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. Look at, and my reward is with me. To give every man according as his work shall be. Now, our rewards as the church of the living God has two aspects. Two. Go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Okay? Ephesians chapter 1, verses 5 on to verse 14. Very familiar verses. But remember what we just read in Revelation. Here, take your pardon, brother. I, want to, I might go back to that. In Revelation 22, verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 5 on to verse 14. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Predestinated. That means once you are saved, your course is fixed. Okay? But let's continue. <clears throat> to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Remember, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Let's continue. Wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he hath proposed in himself, 
that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. <clears throat> in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. <coughs> Excuse me. Now see in verse 11, you see predestinated, right? And over here in verse 5, you see again, predestinated okay Calvinists take that as elect and non-elect okay heresy but the predestination is once you are saved you're going to heaven you are going to heaven okay verses 12 now on to verse 14 <clears throat> That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. <clears throat> in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your, of your salvation. <clears throat> in whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Now, right there, verse 13, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Okay? You were sealed. Sealed. Eternally secure. You're going to heaven. Verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Okay? <clears throat> Brother Brian once used the analogy of, um, you know, you go to a store and you see a product that you want, but uh, you put a little money down on it, and then the guy or the guy of the store puts a sold sticker on it that way no one else will come and get it or something like that but it's yours until you uh give the rest of it for the purchased possession or that you come and pick it up and it be uh and it's with you see okay hence when you are truly saved and born again <clears throat> you have god the father living within you our Lord Jesus Christ and the Lord is that spirit. Okay? You are sealed. You are predestinated to go to heaven. That is what the predestination means. That once you are saved, you are going to heaven. Okay? No ifs, ands, or buts about it. You're saved. You're sealed. You're eternally secure. You're going to heaven. Until, and that, the Holy Ghost within us, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Okay? Inheritance. When you look into the scriptures, inheritance usually is attributed to a land grant or you're inheriting a piece of property or land and of course the per the redemption is the catching away of the body of christ before the time of jacob's trouble okay our redemption resurrection okay that's what that is until the redemption of the purchased possession you're bought and paid for. Bought with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Your purchased possession. He owns you. And our redemption, our resurrection, 
is us being caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble. That's when we are redeemed, when he calls us up. Okay? And that is what the predestination means. But now, go to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, verses 2 to verse 5. Okay, we're going to be skipping around in uh, Romans chapter 4 here, but Romans chapter 4, verses 2 on to verse 5. Talking about Abraham. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. Those of you who think that you got to earn your salvation, you Catholics, what are you going to do? Say to the Lord, well, you owe me. He owes you nothing. <laughs> we, the church of the living God, owe him everything. Verse 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Now, when Paul is talking about works and things like that, it's always a reference on to the works of the law. Okay? All right? That's what that means when you see Paul talk about works. Okay? It's always, he's always referring to the, uh, the law of Moses, the Levitical law, that kind of stuff. Okay? Always. Okay? That's what he's talking about. You get it? But now, skip to uh, verses 13 on to verse 16, okay? Verses 13 on to verse 16 in Romans chapter 4. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Why? Because, what does it say here in verse 3? Or verse 4, excuse me. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but debt. You're owed. Go to your job. You work your 40 hours, you get a paycheck. You're owed that paycheck, right? Okay? But God's grace is a gift. By grace are ye saved through faith. Okay? Because we are very, of the utmost, undeserving of God's unmerited favor. Okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Okay? Some like to say, well, ignorance is bliss. <laughs> yeah, be careful with that. By the law is the knowledge of sin. The law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. It's by the law that you know that you're a sinner, that you're no good, that even at your best state, you are altogether vanity. Hi. Okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> Verse 16. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, 
but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us, father of us all. Okay. Now skip down to verse twenty on to verse twenty-five. Okay. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, he being Abraham, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. Those of you who are of the church of the living God, who are constantly doubting your salvation, okay? Look at verse 21 and verse 22. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. <clears throat> Do you not believe the scripture that you are sealed until the day of redemption? Until the, per, uh, the redemption of the purchased possession? Hmm? And also now look at Romans chapter 5, verse 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more... The grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath, hath abounded unto many. The gift by grace. The gift by grace. You or I could do absolutely nothing worthy of the gift of God's grace through faith that he bestows upon us who are saved and born again of the church of the living God and who come unto him according to his standards through repentance. Repentance. Check out Brother Aaron, uh, Aaron Deering's video about is repentance required for salvation fantastic sermon as always by our beloved brother Aaron Darren check that video out okay so what do we see so far what do we see so far hmm? about the purchased redemption sealed onto the day of redemption okay and it is by God's grace unmerited favor given on to you to me church of the living god who are unworthy who deserve to go to hell who are not good right go to john chapter 10 go to john chapter 10 john chapter 10 we will be reading verses 1 under verse 18 ah John chapter 10, verses 1 on to verse 18. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. There's only one way. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? And you come unto him by his terms through repentance. Repenting of yourself, your self-righteousness. Okay? Let's continue. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. 
To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Look at that again. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Reference to the catching way of uh, the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble right there. Verse 4. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, and they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Ever listen to someone and you just, they're saying the right things, but it's like, wait, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hmm, it checks out. So far, something's wrong. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Because he made a reference to the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jesus' trouble. See, okay, let's continue. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Circle I am, okay? All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Ooh, let's continue. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Oh boy. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, people who are in church buildings, okay, And not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. A little leaven, leaveneth the whole lump. Okay, let's continue. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. <clears throat> I am the good shepherd. And know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, not of this fold, specifically they're referencing of this fold. He was talking about the Jewish people. But he says, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd, making a reference to this current dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Okay? This is why these that's this is why they didn't understand it at first. Okay? Let's continue. Therefore doth my father love me, because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. And skip over now to verse 27 on to verse 30. 27 on to verse 30, still in John chapter 10. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them, I give 
unto them eternal life. Ha ha! And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Okay, watch this. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Oh, oh, that's too different. Shh, shh. Whoa, 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 whoa. Verse 30. I and my Father are one in divine nature. I and my Father are one in essence? No. I and my Father are one. One. One God, Spirit, Soul, and Body. Yes. Okay? What do we see? Look at verse 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And look at verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come, that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. <clears throat> so you see, beloved brethren, sisters, one aspect of our reward is that he gives us eternal life. Okay? That's one aspect of our reward. You and me as worthless, dirty, rotten, stinking sinners who deserve to go to hell, who come to the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, as broken, contrite sinners... We come to him broken. Believe on him for what he did for us and call upon him out of a broken and contrite heart. Calling upon the name of the Lord, we are saved, sealed. Okay, we're born again. We're going to heaven. And one of those things, one aspect of the reward, <clears throat> and I give unto them eternal life. Okay? You with me so far? That's one aspect of our reward. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now go to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Very familiar verse again. Verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. <laughs> Social distancing. <laughs> flu shot. And the inevitable force vaccination okay okay and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god okay verse 1 that ye that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice okay verse 2 but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. All right? See, it is our reasonable service once we are saved, sealed, purchased by our Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. Okay? He bought us with, our, with his own blood. It is our reasonable service to abstain from all appearance from evil, and to be transformed in the renewing of our mind. Okay? Changed life. Okay? The changed life, God himself brings upon 
Okay. But it is our reason is reasonable um, service to be transformed and to adhere to the standard which he has given us. Okay, that's your reasonable service. It's the least, the least you or I can do. And it is the greatest thing. A privilege. A privilege to walk according to the standards that our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, hath given us in his perfect and errant, given by inspiration word, the King James Scriptures. Okay? We know this. But now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter 9 verses 16 on to verse 27. First Corinthians chapter 9 verses 16 on to verse 27. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. Hi. For necessity is laid upon me, yea, Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Now, now, those of you will say, well, Paul is our apostle. He was called to do that. Each and every one of us. Okay, that means you too, brother, sister. We're in the ministry of reconciliation. Okay, a reasonable service. All right, a reasonable service. Oh, big part. Okay. So, you know, so when someone, well, Paul was our apostle, we're not, we're all in the ministry of reconciliation. You have no excuse for doing nothing. Why would you want not to do anything? Let's continue. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. What is my reward then? Verily, that I may preach the gospel. When I preach the gospel, excuse me, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. And if you were to read uh, from verses 1 on to verse, where did we begin? Uh, verse 16 on to verse 15, you'll see that Paul had this power to forbear working, but he chose not to, to set an example for us. Okay? He could have, and he had every right, but he chose not to. That's what people like to say. Uh, conveniently skip or leave out when they attack people who have been called to preach. Okay, that's the one thing they like to like jump over. Mm, kind of like repentance. Let's continue, okay? For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. I'm your servant. I serve the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, but I'm your servant. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law, not, uh, being not, circle that, circle not. Being not without law to God, but under the law of Christ. Oh, yes, the law of Christ. Yeah. Uh, uh, you could also say his commandments that he has given us. Yeah, let's continue. That I might gain them that are without law. To the weak became I as weak that I might gain the weak. 
I am made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. I am made. As I remember correctly, a lot of these Bibles out there replace made with I am become all things. I am made all things to all men that I might be by all by that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake that I might be partaker thereof with you. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. Now, that does not mean that you and I, as brothers, are competing with each other to get a better place or inheritance. No, 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 no. It's an example he is setting. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. Okay? And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway hypocrite. Keep, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, mortification, self-control, that kind of thing, okay? Now, look at verse 25. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. About the crown, go to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. Uh, we're going to read this whole chapter. I hope you can handle it. Now, Revelation chapter 4 is after when the Lord um, speaks unto the seven churches. Okay? Revelation chapter 4. After this I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will shew thee things which must be hereafter. Right there is the catching way of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. That is the catching away. That is our redemption. Okay? That is our resurrection. Right there. Let's continue. And immediately I was in the spirit, lowercase s, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne, were four beasts, full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, 
and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had the face as, of, as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about them, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever. Now, this is very important in context here to what we're about to look at. Okay. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever. Glory. Honor, thanks. The four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Why did God create you? Why did God create me? And for thy pleasure they are and were created. Uh, in other terms, because he felt like it. Because he wanted to. Got a problem with that? So, from verse 9 on to verse 11, what do we see? Verse 9. Honor, uh, glory, honor, and thanks. Verse 10. Worship. Verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Oh, what it's going to be like to forever praise and glorify our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who redeemed us, who saved us from hell, that we may be with him. What a glorious thing that's going to be. What, what a glory. What a glory. But now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 10. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, an house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. I don't know about you, brother, sister, but... Uh, <laughs> Is today the day, Lord, that you're going to call us? Get us out of here? Resurrect us? Redeem us? You know, your purchased possession? Yeah. Don't worry there, brothers, sisters. It's coming soon. Let's continue. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is our belief. Who... <coughs> Excuse me, beg your pardon. Ah. Now he that hath wrought us for the self same thing is God. 
who also hath given unto us the earnest of the capital S Spirit. He has given us Himself. Sealed unto the day of redemption, you have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwelling within you. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. I, I have met people who said have said things like, boy, I hope, I, I hope he doesn't come yet. I hope we don't get called up yet because things aren't too bad. Verse 6, Therefore we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Um, if you are one of those who's like, take your time, Lord. Things are going pretty good for me right now at the moment. Even with all this nonsense going on. You, you need to examine, look, look at me. You need to examine yourselves in the light of scripture and see if you are even truly saved. Why do you not want to go and be with the Lord? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Let's continue. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that when, when, whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all, Church of the Living God, appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Let's read that again. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14, verses 7 under verse 12. Romans 14, verses, uh, Romans 14, verses 7 under verse 12. Now, context is talking about judging people who want to keep a, a holy day and those who don't want to, stuff like that, and your what you eat. Okay? That's the context. But, verse 7 on to verse 12. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. But why dost thou judge thy brother, thy brother, those who are of the church of the living God? Okay? Or why doest thou, or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Okay, and also you can reference Romans chapter 2, verses 17 on to verse 24, where it's talking about judging hypocritically. And again, if you were to read this whole chapter, I think I have a video on this. Um, you can't judge a brother on what they want to eat. You may give them funny looks, <laughs> but uh, you can't judge their, you, you can't. You gotta be careful with that. And as far as the thing as holy day esteemeth one day above the uh, another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be so fully persuaded in his own mind. 
An example. If you want to spend the day Wednesday where you just stay at home and devote that entire day of worshiping the Lord, yes, you ought to do that every single day of the week. Yes, but if that's your day that you set aside for the Lord, fine. Remember, the Sabbath is a sign for the Jews. That was for the Jews, not for us today in this dispensation. The Sabbath is not a mandatory thing to be kept, okay? If someone wants to worship the Lord fully and totally just one day by, you know, Wednesday, and you do it on, say, Sunday, you can't judge your brother for that. Okay? You cannot judge your brother for that. And if you like meat and your brother or sister is a vegetarian or even a vegan, like I said, both y'all could look at each other kind of like, eh, but you can't judge them for that. Okay? But the point is, sorry for that little rabbit trail. I like rabbits. They're really good, too. Soy sauce and sweet. Never mind. For this, and look, uh, verse 9. Oh, excuse me, verse 10. But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ. That's for you and I who are saved. Okay? For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Okay? Okay, you with me so far? Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter 3, very familiar verses unto you, they ought to be, verses 11 on to verse 15. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now if any man build upon this foundation, build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, which will abide fire, wood, hay, stubble, stuff will be burnt. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Now, these things here, the pre, uh, okay, gold, silver, precious stone, those are things that can abide the fire. Wood, hay, stubble, they get burnt up really quickly. Have you ever seen a hay fire before? Just like throw a match in it, and that, that stuff kindles up like nothing, man. Okay, and right here, verse 15. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Go to 2 Timothy. Go to 2 Timothy, chapter 4. 2 Timothy, chapter 4. Whoa, whoa, come on, Brad. Come on, work with me, fingers. 2 Timothy, chapter 4. We will be reading verses 5 on to verse 8. Verses 5 on to verse 8 in 2 Timothy chapter 4. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Now, you remember about in John chapter 10, go back there please, John chapter 10, 
John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verse 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and he shall go in and out and find pasture. And remember, beloved brethren, sisters, okay? We get caught up, redeemed, purchased, Possession, okay? We get caught up. We come back with the Lord at his second coming. Okay, we come down with him. Go back to Ephesians chapter 1. Go back to Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. An inheritance. And like I said, when you look into the scriptures, an inheritance is always usually equated with land. Okay? Inheriting things from a father. Property, goods, stuff like that. Okay? Okay? The other aspect of our reward is millennial inheritance during the millennial reign with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The 1,000 years of peace where we're going to be farmers. Okay? Our rewards that shall survive the fire will be attributed to us in our millennial inheritance when we come back with him at the second coming. Okay? So, the two aspects. Number one is our salvation. The gift of salvation. By grace are ye saved through faith. Yes, our salvation is a gift. It truly is to those of us who are truly wicked, evil, sinful, disgusting, deserving to go to hell. We come to the Lord, broken of ourselves, contrite, and trust on Him. Call on Him, and He comes and dwells within you. Okay? And remember, that, that within me, that is, within my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Okay? Got to remember that. But the other aspect of our reward is our millennial inheritance. Okay? Excuse me one second, brethren. Sorry about that, brethren. Okay? Now, for our instruction in righteousness, for our instruction in righteousness, go to Matthew chapter 25. Now, you have to remember about Matthew chapter 25. Okay? You have to remember that doctrinally, this is not written for us, but this is our instruction in, for our instruction in righteousness today. Because today, in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, once you are saved, you're sealed, you're going to heaven. But let's get a little instruction in righteousness right here, okay? Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 on to verse 30. Matthew chapter 25 Verses 14 on to verse 30. For the kingdom of heaven, physical, literal kingdom in Jerusalem, where Jesus Christ, God our Father, is going to be ruling and reigning from during the millennial reign. And when he come back the second time at his second coming to establish the millennial kingdom, you and I, brother, sister, of the Church of the Living God, once we are uh, resurrected, redeemed, caught up, you know, we're coming back down with Him at the second coming for our eternal inheritance. You have to remember that. But, for the kingdom of heaven, always a reference to the physical, literal kingdom in Jerusalem. Remember that. Let's continue. 
For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants, and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Aha! He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, look at, notice this, okay? Notice this. Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man. Okay, right there, right there. Stop. Hold up. Right there. Okay? Look at verse 20. Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents you gave me. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. Lord, you gave this to me. See? His Lord saith unto him, Well done, good, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Okay? He also that had received two talents said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Lord, you gave me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. You remember when our Lord Jesus Christ said, Have not I chose you twelve, and one of you is a devil? Let's throw that around in your head a little bit. But now, look at this contrast. Then he, had, then he which had received the one talents came and said, <laughs> Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man. <coughs> Boy, there's a whole lot of thankfulness in that statement, isn't there, right? Reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. Do you get the accusatory tone there? Kind of like... The woman that thou gavest me, gavest to be with me, she did give me of the tree, and I did eat, right? And I was afraid, and I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, <laughs> there thou hast, that is thine. Look at those two verses. Or, yeah, look at these two verses, 24 and 25. Look at that. Where the other two is like, Lord, you gave me. And here, this is what I've done with what you have given me. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Those two before this one, you see that? 
This one, what does he do? <laughs> you're a hard guy. <laughs> and I, I know that uh, you're reaping where you haven't done anything. Can you imagine that? And look, look at this. Verse 26, beginning of verse 26. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou, and look at him throwing it back in his teeth. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed? Who are you to say this to me? You see that? You see that? <laughs> throwing it back right at him. It's like, who do you think you're talking to? Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Should have at least done something. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For every one that hath shall be given. And he shall have abundance, but from him that hath not, but from him that hath not, shall be taken away, shall be taken away even that which he hath. Look at that. Okay, this is for our instruction in righteousness, though. Okay, this is for our instruction in righteousness. For everyone that hath shall be given. You're saved and born again. You have God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, living within you. And he shall have abundance. Okay? You're saved and born again. You're going to heaven. You're saved. You're not going to hell. You are laboring for the Lord because we owe him. He loved, past tense, us first. And gave, past tense. For by grace are you saved through faith. Our reasonable service is to serve him in whatever the capacity is that you are in to do so. Which he has given you to do so. Okay? You get me so far? Yes? Okay. But from him that hath not shall be taken, but from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. Those who call themselves Christians and think that they're saved and going to heaven and they are worse than an infidel, okay? They think they're going to heaven. They think they're going to be caught up. Imagine their shock when we, the Church of the Living God, are resurrected. For our instruction in righteousness, okay? What we're looking at is for our instruction in righteousness, okay? Verse 30. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I've done, I've mentioned this to you before. At the judgment seat of Christ, we're going to be in fear. Like, oh! Face down on the ground. Picture this again. The Lord lifts up your head, makes you look him in the eye, and give an account. What do you have to say for yourself? And also, again, those who are genuinely saved, but resist the Lord, who want to live and love of the world, who fight 
the changed life that inevitably comes, that persist in doing evil, that persist in their wickedness, that don't want to change but to be as the world, to have their cake and to eat it too. That's very dangerous. I've already addressed that before. But those that are of such of the church of the living God, their life amounts to what? Nothing. No fruit. Might be saved. Born again. But imagine again. Getting before the Lord. And he look at you with a disdain. Because remember, God is not a liar. Do you have confidence that he's going to do what he said he was going to do? Right? Can you imagine getting before the Lord and he, again, I've done this before, and him being like, oh, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, you can get, go, just go, just go, go in. Go in. Yeah. Yeah. I can't scarcely imagine that. I can't scarcely imagine that. So see, when we do work down here for the Lord, it's not for our salvation. Okay? <laughs> Give me a break. It is our reasonable service to magnify our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? And hence, we will be rewarded in millennial inheritance, okay? Notice here for our instruction in righteousness, um, verse, 20, uh, verse 21, I will make thee ruler over many things for our instruction in righteousness. Okay. See, the rewards you are earning today after you are saved and born again, sealed, are for your millennial inheritance. Rule and reign. Ah, yeah, you were wondering when we were going to go there, uh, weren't you? First Timothy, oh, Second Timothy, excuse me, chapter two. Second Timothy, chapter two. Second Timothy, chapter two, verses one under verse thirteen. Thou, therefore, my son. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if any man, and if a man, excuse me, and if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. And if someone goes up any other way except through the door, he's a thief and a robber. Hmm. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say. And the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bounds, even on the bonds. But the word of God is not bound. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sakes, 
that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also, you see that? You see that? Reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Look at that verse very quickly. Look at that. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Persecutions, afflictions, necessities among false brethren, physical ailments. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Deny the suffering that comes of being a good soldier. For those who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. All those who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And there are those who, lest they suffer persecution for the cross of Christ, will have you to be circumcised. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Thou wicked, slothful servant. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. He cannot deny himself. Look at that contrast. You are part of his body. You belong to him. He brought you with his blood. Okay? He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You're part of Jesus Christ, God the Father. You have him living within you. Beg your pardon. He cannot deny himself. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. You understand? Now, brethren, there are many people out there who say, I don't care about rewards just so long as I go to heaven. And, amen, amen, but brethren, sisters, I don't know about you, but I love the Lord Jesus Christ, God my Father. How can you not love a God? such as our Lord Jesus Christ, God, our Father, for what all that he has done for you, for me. Therefore, I want to serve him. Necessity is upon me. If I don't, but if I do it willingly, I have a reward. Do you get the point? And the rewards that we are striving for is for our millennial inheritance. Okay? We are already rewarded with eternal life. Yes. But we are to strive for our eternal inheritance. Uh, you know, the millennial kingdom. That's what, our, uh, what we are gaining rewards for. For millennial reign. Okay, but there again, like I said, I, I know many who don't care just as so long as I get just as so long as I get there. Amen. You're saved, sealed, born again, going to heaven. Absolutely. But brethren, don't you want at least one reward? 
Look well. Because if we deny him, he also will deny us. But wait, if we believe not yet, he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. See, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Millennial inheritance. See, that's the rewards. The crowns that we cast at his feet, it's, it is because in Revelation chapter 4 again, okay, Revelation chapter 4, it is, come on, work with me, verses 9 on to verse 11, and when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on a throne who liveth forever and ever the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying thou art worthy o lord to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created And there are those of you who are going to receive crown, many crowns, for the love that you have for our Lord and committing yourself unto Him, which is your reasonable service. Not working for your salvation. No, no, no. On that, go to Second Samuel. Second Samuel. This, um, this was kind of an afterthought while I was out, um, <laughs> while I was out walking Zena, my dog. Um, but it, it's so choice. It's so choice. <sighs> Coffee. Second Samuel chapter nine. Come on. Second Samuel chapter nine. You are going to see a type here. Okay. 2 Samuel chapter 9. It's nothing, it's not a second best thing to be see, to be saved and sealed unto the day of redemption. Absolutely not. Don't you want to rule and reign with our Lord Jesus Christ? Or are you just going to be satisfied with the, oh, yeah, yeah, because he cannot deny himself, truly saved and born again. You could have messed up your life if he hasn't killed you yet, so that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, read that on your own time. Okay, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Okay, you mess around as a church of the living God long enough, he's going to kill you. Got to be careful. But even with that, are you just going to be fine with the Lord? Imagine that. Yeah, yeah. Get, get in there. Just go. Next. Second Samuel chapter 9. Yeah, we're going to read this whole chapter. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may shew him kindness for Jonathan's sake? David and Jonathan made a covenant between each other. And David said that he wouldn't, uh, that, you know, Jonathan's seed wouldn't be accursed and stuff like that, okay? Basically, okay? And King Saul died and King David came in to his kingdom, okay? King David came into his kingdom. King David. Okay, let's continue, okay? And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. 
And when they had called unto him, and when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may shew the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, in Lodabar. Then king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will shew, for I will surely shew thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat the at, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. Are you getting a picture of the types within what we have just read? Mephibosheth, because of the covenant that he made, that David made with Jonathan, the son of Machir, of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel in Lodabar, bad pasture land or bad pasture or bad harvest land, something like that is what Lodabar means. Okay, he came up from there and out of no merit of his own, King David said, Fear not, for I will sh surely shew thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake. Let's continue. Verse 8. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread, Alway at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for, Mephib as for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. And all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table, and was lame on both his feet. I love that chapter. I, re I really do. I really do. The types were all over the place, weren't they? Yeah, absolutely. 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 And amen. The fact that you are saved, sealed, born again, going to heaven when you die, amen. Amen. But brother, sister, your reasonable service is to be conformed to the standard given to you in this book, the scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures. And the rewards that you are working for are for your inheritance within the millennial kingdom. It's a twofold thing, our rewards. Our redemption, our resurrection, and eternal inheritance 
or millennial inheritance, millennial kingdom. Those are the two aspects of our rewards. Okay? So, hopefully that has answered the question about the rewards for you. Um, thank you very much for watching, if you do. Um, thank you. And thank you to all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all the mercy and kindness that you have shewed unto your servant. I love you, brethren, sisters. Praying for so many of you every single day. And pray for one another fervently. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.